Hi there, it's Ina here and today I want to alter this rather simple wall decoration. I will be working on the reverse side and I will be using bits and pieces of broken jewelry and other odds and ends. Uh, to start with, I want to add a background and I had this little mat in my stash for very too long <laughs> and it's a perfect size, so I think it was meant to be. So I'm using plenty of tacky glue to glue this down because it has to be really strong and has to stay put. Now a lot of my jewelry pieces were given to me by my girls whenever they have something they don't like anymore or it breaks, they usually give it to me. But some I also received in the mail or from other friends. So as soon as this is kind of stuck and dry, I'm covering everything with gesso. And even though my project will get another coat of gesso later on, I think it's really helpful to have the background already colored and covered. It makes the next step way easier. Now this project is not difficult by any means, but it is a little time consuming. A lot of uh, painting, gluing and waiting for things to dry. So I'm starting by adding some texture first just pieces of paper doily using the same glue. And then I found this very flexible, uh, lightweight craft wire. And so I'm using my hot glue gun to attach that as well. And I also attach some drywall tape. And even though it's adhesive, I still use my glue gun just to make sure it won't go anywhere. And I also like the effect of putting these elements across a little edge and towards the back. I think it gives it just a little added interest. So, and then I added lace and ribbon, different bits and pieces, mostly the things which were too short to use for anything else or had a funny color I don't use very often, as colors really don't matter in this project. I especially wanted a piece which have a lot of texture as at this point I'm just building up my background texture with different elements. Let's see. Oh yeah, and this is a piece of upholstery ribbon. So it's rather um, bulky and I like that. I like that effect. And now two pieces of rough burlap. And I think that is it for the background. And then I'm adding a piece of cardboard. I uh, we'll just add this with, um, while well, I had some tacky glue and I added some hot glue too, just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And this will be a base for an image I will add later on. And it's drying and flat under my container of gesso here. So now I'm switching to a different glue and that is E6000 because it works really, really well with metals but it doesn't dry immediately, which means it gives me some room to maneuver, a little room to shift things around. I like to rearrange things until I'm happy because in a project like this, you don't really know how you really want it and how it's gonna look good and you like a little time to play. So this glue works really well. So apart from jewelry, I'm also adding some fancy buttons, some very simple buttons, different shapes, I am adding, what else am I adding? Well, I also raided my handyman's drawer and so there are some screws on there, some nuts, a spring. This is a piece of a necklace. So is that big, huge square piece in the corner. This is a really cute little embellishment. It's like an old uh, vintage looking keyhole. I used a few little plastic elements. Let's see, what else did I use? I use my plier a lot because some things just had to be taken apart in order to be flat or I had to cut apart some of the chain I was using. And then at this point I added this string because I thought it would be nice and interesting to have those two big earrings look like they're hanging from the top. And again the glue came handy as it wasn't dry yet and I was able to shift things around and put them back easily. This is a little earring, a stud, and the other one I think is on the top there too. Now for a project like this, I think it's the easiest to add first the big pieces and then fill in the spaces with the smaller pieces you have. Now sometimes when I use buttons, I would take off the little piece on the back 
so they would play a little more flat. I used some beads. It's kind of nice that in this project color is not important because you can so easily use up all the funny pieces you have in your stash and you don't really know <laughs> how to use. Now on the ledge here I'm using these half pearls. This is uh, just a sticker I found at the dollar store and even though it's adhesive I'm again adding my strong glue because I don't want them to move or go anywhere. A few more gears, I think we are nearly at the end here. And of course, it, uh, with this part, there's no end to it. You could add lots more element. But I was more going for well covered, but not overdone. <laughs> so I think we are nearly done with this part. Oh yeah, I wanted to add a little more interest to the edge. So I'm just using bits and pieces of drywall tape just to give the edge also a little more texture and I will show it to you in a second. So this was a fun part, gluing everything down. There's my edges and now I need to add some more texture. I like to make these pieces fuse together just a little bit. I didn't want them to look too tidy. I wanted to have the lines kind of a little blurry, especially where the little cardboard piece is. So I'm adding a small amount, not a huge amount, but here and there, just to texture the elements a little more. And, you know, they get a little bit more rough edges. And I, yeah, I like the look of that. And again, of course, I had to wait for all this to be dry. There are several times when I took off and did something else and then came back. So it is dry, yay! And now I need to cover everything with gesso. And I'm using an old uh, hard bristle, long bristle brush so I can get into all the corners. And yes, at this point, it really helps that the background had already a uh, coat, but still, this takes a little while. So here you see the very end of it. I think I had to give it about two coats especially some of the elements like the really bright green earring. It took a little while to cover it up. So uh, let's see. And I have it all over my hands too, of course. <laughs> now I'm preparing the little element. Actually, it's the base for it. I'm adding some tissue paper to another piece of cardboard, This is which is just a tiny bit smaller than the one I added to my project. And I'm not being very careful with the edges because you're not going to see that. So as, as soon as that's dry, well, it's drying, I'm cutting the image to size. And I'm giving it a little bit of archival ink all around the edges and a little stamping. Again, with my archival ink, and I'm being careful not to stamp on the image, but just on the back. One more, I think. Let's see. And one other stamp. There you go. And now I uh, want to embellish it a tiny bit. I quite like the image just the way it is, but I thought to give a little color to the flowers she's holding. So I'm using my Ultra Metallic Vivids. And this color is really pretty. Uh, let's see. what's uh, It's called Wine and Roses. And I will use it later on also in my project again. Now, if you have seen my videos before, you know I enjoy detailing. <laughs> so I'm taking my time. This is my white Posca pen. And so I just give it a little highlight, a little bit on her clothes as well, just to bring a little extra brightness into the image. Hmm. Let's see. And I'm protecting it just with some mud, mud potch and then I will be attaching it to the little background here using also my mud potch and then I set it aside and it will be ready to go into my project uh, towards the end. Make sure I have no bubbles. All right and now to coloring. This is another really fun part. I'm using different uh, shades of glimmer mist, uh, mostly uh, turquoise, green, a couple of different gold tones, 
and I dry so in between quite often because I don't want these to puddle or create any red spots underneath all these elements. So I dry very frequently. And this is really um, just playing around because uh, with these glimmer mists, they're not completely opaque. So it takes a little while to have the saturation you like. And so you just have to play with it a little bit. I'm also adding some to the edges to make it all kind of match together. Now I really like to use metallic copper paint. So again, I'm having it here on a dry brush just to go over the very top of all these textured pieces. It just brings them out more. I like the looks. And I, yeah, I know. I use it very frequently. You just have to make sure the brush is rather dry because you don't want to overdo it with this. Now I added a little extra of the paint to the edge of the project as that needed a little more color. So here the brush could be a little wetter, not too much, just to kind of finish it up there. And then I also added again my Vivid color, the same one I used before, my Vivid Ultra Metallic, just again on the very top of all these uh, textured elements. And this is really a lot of fun, just playing really to see uh, what looks good. This is a little bit of white paint. You can't really go wrong with this step, but sometimes it takes a little while until, yeah, until you're satisfied and until you're happy with the way it looks. So I used all kinds of different colors. I tried different um, shades. And eventually I went back for more sprays because they really seep into all the little corners. First, the same colors I'd used before. And then I'm introducing some, um, this is kind of a wine red, but it's a glimmer mist. And I thought it was nice to add another color. And here I'm using my gold vivid uh, ultra metallics just with my finger. I mixed it with a little bit of liquid glitter and so the top of these elements just give a, get a little extra shine and glimmer and I have it all over my hands of course. So let's see what comes next. Now it's time to add my uh, image. It's all done and of course because of the little baseboard there it's really easy to attach it. And I think the last step is attaching these three glass stones I have. And there are three nice spots for these to go. And I think this is it. So here it is. It's all completed. Of course, it has an amazing texture. And I'm also very happy with the way the colors came together and blended so nicely and the bit of shimmer and shine it has. Now the glue I used for these glass stones dried completely clear so now I can see the texture underneath it and I think adding these was a nice finishing touch. I of course like this image. This came just from a piece of fancy craft paper and sorry I cannot give you the origin as I don't really keep track of those things. So again one more little detailed look. There are a few little small pieces you might have missed. This is a uh, the face of a little wrist watch. There's a little angel here, used to be part of a necklace. There's a little textured heart and so on. And of course the knob, I guess it could have been a kitchen drawer knob. So I like the way it all came together. I like the way it fused with the modeling paste. And you can surely see all the texture pieces, the little rope which attached these earrings all across a little ledge there. You can see the mat I added first and it gives a great background texture. And also all the lace and ribbon and the mesh. It all kind of works together. And this was a really fun project. I think it's a great way to use up jewelry pieces, especially the big and chunky ones, which are not so suitable for art journal pages or even art journal covers. And I have more left, so I'm sure I will make more projects like this. The edge I kept very simple, but it has a little texture as well. I hope you liked this as much as I did. If you did, 
please give me a thumbs up please write me a comment i always love to hear from you and well i will see you really soon again bye bye for now Thank you.